Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a very interesting study coming from Netherlands that investigates the possibility of growing crops both on Mars and on the Moon and actually has some really interesting positive results. Let's talk about this and welcome to Adame. So if we were to try to land right here on the moon, we would discover a lot of relatively inhospitable environments. Specifically when it comes to the actual regolith, which is of course this uh, rocky material on the surface of the moon, it's not particularly good for growing anything. It's basically for the most part dead, it, there's nothing in there and it's kind of like trying to grow something in uh, a bowl of dust. It's just not going to work. The same thing can be said about the surface of the beautiful neighbor that we have, Mars. And you might remember the scene from The Martian, which unfortunately I can't show you because uh, it's going to get copyright claimed. Um, but in that scene, you might remember that Mark Watney tries to grow potatoes in the soil and he actually does succeed. Well, turns out that in that book, the Martian soil was a lot less hospitable than it is in reality. So, there was a study that came out only a few days ago, and it's a study from a magazine on agriculture that literally investigated whether it's possible to grow anything in the soil coming from Mars and from the Moon. Now, obviously, we don't, we don't have anything from Mars, and we have very, very little um, of actual soil from the Moon to grow anything in it, but turns out there's an entire business of companies selling simulated Martian soil and also simulated Moon soil, or I guess regolith. Which is actually kind of surprising because, I mean, why would you want to buy simulated soil anyway? Well, obviously for scientific reasons, but why else? So it's probably not a very successful business, but nevertheless it does exist. This is sort of what it looks like on the inside if you were to just try to pour it out somewhere. And what's really interesting is that all of this is based on actual observations and actual studies, chemical studies, coming from previous missions on Mars and on the Moon. And here's one of these places where you can buy all of this. This is called the Exolith Lab. It's actually a non-for-profit, so they're not making any money from it, but um, they are selling it in bulk to anyone who wants to buy it. And they of course sell the lunar soil as well, which comes in the package that you see on the screen. And in a sense, it looks very similar to uh, the dirt we have here on Earth for obvious reasons, because uh, Moon and Earth do have very similar composition. But there is a very important piece missing here, and that's of course any kind of nutrients and any kind of other important um, materials that are present in Earth soil that allow various things like plants and crops to grow and to develop. So this is technically basically just dead soil, it's not good for anything. And by studying various types of regolith and Martian soil, the only thing we discovered is that, well, it turns out that the Martian dust is relatively dangerous to humans. If we were to inhale it, it can be pretty deadly over time. So we know that it's not good for us. But the scientists behind the paper that you can find in the description below decided to take a risk and they investigated both um, regolith and the Martian soil by mixing it with various materials. Here's actually a very specific uh, amount of stuff that they mixed. If you know anything about agriculture, you might be able to understand what's going on here. I'm not entirely sure what all of this means though, because I don't really farm. But nevertheless, um, it seems that whatever they put in there worked. Because only within a few weeks they were able to grow quite a large amount of stuff in both the moon um, regolith and of course Martian soil while also trying to grow exactly the same plants in the earth soil as well. Now you can kind of tell the difference here, you can see that the red stuff is obviously the Martian soil, the darker is the lunar regolith, and the slightly brighter is the uh, earth soil. So obviously earth produced the most of materials, the most plants, but this graph here shows that if you were to look at the total biomass produced, the Martian soil wasn't really that far off from whatever we can produce on Earth. And even the Moon uh, did pretty good considering the fact that we've always believed uh, lunar regolith to be unable to produce anything. Now, 
Is this a groundbreaking discovery? Well, it actually kind of is, because all of this suggests to us that as long as we bring the correct nutrients with us, and as long as we mix the correct materials in the correct proportions, we'll be able to establish farms on Mars and the Moon very easily and not rely on Earth for pretty much anything really. We can produce our own food very easily on Mars. And what's really interesting is that in order for them to kind of make this a little bit more realistic from a space exploration perspective, they really only use nutrients from um, previous crops. In other words, they reuse the crops uh, from another farm, which of course means that um, in, in a perfect environment, what you would be doing here is once you grow one set of crops, you then reuse them to grow the second set of crops. And this is kind of how farming works on Earth as well. But um, for the Moon and Mars, it means that we'll be able to continuously have harvest one after another as long as we essentially bring competent agriculture experts who can make sure that we mix the right amount of stuff and of course do it in a timely manner. And one thing I need to mention is of course the types of crops that they used. You can kind of see them on the screen here. And of everything that they planted, including even quinoa, which is usually is not very easy to grow, only one crop failed, which is actually really interesting. Turns out that spinach is a relatively fussy grower. It didn't really grow well and unfortunately failed in this experiment. But nine other crops were totally fine, including things like tomatoes and peas. Although interestingly, potatoes, which are of course a big part of the Martian, the movie and the book, were not present. So we don't really know if potatoes would fail, but chances are they would be just fine as well. And although overall it doesn't really matter as much for Mars right now because we're not really planning to go there in the next 15 to 20 years, it does matter for the Moon because NASA is planning an actual return to the Moon in 2024. So in about four years, this study may have actually created a very good opportunity for us to create basically a farm on the Moon. And if we can create a successful lunar colony like you see in this painting from Andrei Sokolov, this is from another video I made previously, we can of course establish something even better on Mars in the coming years. So this is an incredible discovery and hopefully it's not just a fluke. I hope someone can actually repeat the study just to confirm that we can definitely grow all of these crops in the lunar soil because this would solve so many problems for us. Being able to create food right there on the moon would actually be absolutely incredible and might even create a new opportunity for a kind of a business, basically lunar farming colonies, which would actually be super cool. But anyway, we'll talk more about all of this once more is discovered. For now, that's really it. It's a really cool discovery and definitely something that to look forward to in 2024. On that note, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't and maybe even share this video with someone who loves learning about space. Space out and as always, bye bye.